name is Alistair Tops, and I'm here today with Dr. Satiris Kellis, Senior Aerospace Engineer and Technical Lead of the NASA Engineering and Safety Center team, which supported the design and testing of the heat shield on the Mars 2020 spacecraft. Dr. Kellis is going to lend some insight into the development of the heat shield structure in advance of the rover's landing. Dr. Kellis, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. Thank you for having me. Please, tell us a little bit about yourself and your role in the Mars 2020 mission. Well, I'm a senior aerospace engineer uh, working at the Atmospheric Flight and Entry Systems Branch at NASA Langley Research Center, Hampton, Virginia. And my specialty is, uh, is in composite structures. Um, in June, July uh, 2018 timeframe, I was asked by the NESC to lead a technical team in support of the redesign, fabrication and testing of the Mars 2020 heat shield structure. Uh, the Mars 2020 is an important mission for NASA and the entire world. It, it marks the beginning of the Mars sample return mission. Uh, MSR, as we call it, will be the first ever mission to attempt retrieval of rock and soil, soil samples from another planet and send them back to Earth. Uh, so with the mission objective to seek signs of ancient life, the Perseverance rover uh, will land near an ancient river delta in the Gizero uh, Great Crater, which is a geologically diverse uh, area. Um, the, the crater is, is an ancient lake and, uh, and the interest is really the, the ancient delta that, that flows into that uh, lake uh, because it is more likely that, uh, that we'll find some signs of ancient life. So with entry and landing being such uh, vital parts of the success of the mission, uh, what are the most critical components of the spacecraft? Well, the, the, the spacecraft has a lot of uh, critical components and any, any failure on the spacecraft, um, you know, will, will result in a, in a catastrophe. Uh, but uh, some parts of the spacecraft are obviously more challenging than others. And, uh, and an atmospheric entry is one of the most challenging phases of any mission. And, um, and therefore the, 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 the heat shield plays a, a big part in the success of the mission. Um, in, in particular, the Mars 2020 spacecraft will have to decelerate from nearly 13,000 miles per hour at entry to uh, do almost nothing two miles per hour uh, before the thrusters are engaged uh, to lower the, the rover on the surface. Uh, and this whole thing is going to happen in about seven minutes. So, in essence, uh, the, the, the the total kinetic energy uh, at entry is converted to a huge amount of heat. Uh, a large proportion of that heat is dissipated by the spacecraft. Spacecrafts are plated heat shield. Therefore, the heat shield structures in general are very challenging to design and require extensive testing to verify their performance. Um, and I must say, uh, you know, it, it takes a lot of uh, uh, analysis um, and, and, and test analysis correlation uh, to verify the performance of a heat shield. Can you go into a little bit more detail about the spacecraft itself? Yeah, the, the, the spacecraft is approximately 14.5 feet in diameter uh, and houses the, the main payload, which is the Perseverance uh, rover, as well as a small helicopter. Um, as, as, far, as far as the uh, heat shield loading is concerned, uh, one of the loadings that we typically uh, test is external pressure loading. Uh, to simulate the the entry environment, um, and and while the main objective of the of the test is to demonstrate performance and and clear the structure for flight, 
Uh, other objectives in, include maturation of design tools. Um, that, that's an important thing uh, to help us improve the structural design of future spacecraft. Uh, therefore, test analysis correlation is, is also an important objective. Uh, to that effect, a full field photogrammetry technique was implemented for the first time on, on flight hardware of the scale uh, to provide a better understanding of the heat shield response under load. So what exactly is photogrammetry? Can you give us a little overview about the technology and how is it implemented in the testing of the spacecraft? Yeah, photogrammetry is a, is a non-contact technique that provides surface and rigid body displacement measure, measurements from photographs. Uh, that's the generic description of the technique. Uh, the measurement is typically achieved by monitoring the, the relative movement of unique features uh, on a body in motion or a structure under load. Uh, and because not all structures have unique features uh, for cameras to trace, painted speckled patterns and, and or targets are often used. Um, with the invention of digital technology and improved image resolution, these techniques are fast evolving and are finding their way to more and more applications. Uh, today, photogrammetry or DIC techniques utilize pairs of high definition cameras to take precise measurements in three dimensions. Uh, moreover, 3D displacement measurements are converted into full field strains, which is something uh, useful that we can use to correlate uh, to our analysis uh, outputs. For the Mars 2020 heat shield structure test, we use three 30 megapixel DIC systems to cover nearly the entire 14 and a half foot diameter of the heat shield surface, uh, being able to uh, to see the entire heat shield su surface was a huge advantage um, for a for a given low step, displacements or, end or strain uh, contours could, could be compared visually against the analytical predictions. And uh, uh, more importantly, following the test, post-process data were transferred to the finite element model uh, for a more precise test analysis correlation. And uh, the, you know, you doing, doing this type of uh, uh, correlation allows us to, to, to see where the analysis is, is lacking. Uh, we can change the boundary conditions, uh, etc. How does digital image correlation provide more effective data than traditional measurement techniques, such as strain gauges, extensometers, or even laser sensors? Yeah, the, the, the key word is uh, full field. Um, the, the conventional instruments are giving us point measurements. Uh, it, using photogrammetry, we can see the entire surface of the heat shield. So if you think about it, uh, instead of having 100, 100 readings from 100 strain gauges at given locations, you have millions and millions of points uh, that you can take measurements from. So how is the load applied to the heat shield during the test? And how does that simulate atmospheric entry? Yeah, as I said, one of the uh, loading cases that, uh, that, that the heat shield um, was subjected to was entry pressure. So essentially, um, you know, to, uh, to, to prove that the heat shield can take the entry pressure you know, you have to apply some some pressure in the lab and monitor the deflections and make sure that that your analysis is one is correct and the heat shield can take the load. It, it the the platform is actually a metal platform. Uh, we can never simulate the exact boundary conditions that a structure uh, will see in flight. Uh, so. It, it, the, the best we can do on Earth, obviously, is to try to simulate the entry conditions as much as possible. So, um, so the, the the structure was laid on a or, or um, 
supported by a rigid substructure uh, and then external pressure was, uh, was applied. We know that DIC requires a random dot pattern on the measurement surface. Can you walk us through the application of this pattern on the heat shield? Yeah, typically we, we pre when we're testing uh, structures in the lab, typically we prefer to, to uh, spray paint the, the surface of the structure. Uh, and, uh, and our specialists here in the lab uh, can vary the speckle pattern or optimize the speckle pattern uh, to improve the, the accuracy of the measurement. Uh, unfortunately, we, we were not able to spray paint the heat shield structure because uh, following the test, that structure had to be prepared for the TPS application. So painting was not an option. Uh, so one way around that was to uh, apply the speckled pattern on a removable film. It was a self-adhesive self uh, film that was then uh, applied to the heat shield and um, and was removed after the test. Was the testing successful? And how did the DIC data compare to your predictions? Uh, the the test went according to plan. Uh, the the test analysis correlation uh, was was uh, really good uh, for the complexity of the structure. And, and as I said, the uh, being able to, uh, to to transfer the photogrammetry results onto the FEM itself following the test uh, was a uh, uh, was a very big help. It it was uh, it was really helpful to um, uh, to get so much data uh, in in. Um, the entire, nearly the entire surface of the structure and correlate with the entire um, simulation. Was digital image correlation technology deployed in any other aspects of the Mars 2020 mission? Yes, it was. Um, following the successful testing of the heat shield, uh, the, NESC, the NESC team was called back in to, to help with the testing of the rover wheels. Uh, and in that case, uh, photogrammetry and other techniques um, were used uh, in tandem uh, to, um, to to take measurements, the formation measurements on the spoke on the spokes of the uh, of the wheels. Dr. Callis, thank you very much for meeting with us today and explaining the important role of digital image correlation in this mission. Everyone at Correlated Solutions will be watching next Thursday, and we wish you, your team, and everyone at NASA the best of luck. Thank you again, and we look forward to the next chapter. Thank you. Bye-bye.